Have you seen what MIT's been up to? If not, they recently won an R&D 100 award for their work on toroidal drone propellers. The big brains over at MIT wanted to create a propeller that performed similarly to like a standard prop you would find on something like a DJI Phantom 4, but they wanted it to be much, much quieter. Now, if you've flown a drone or just been around somebody flying a drone, you, you know that they're not quiet. One of the main reasons for this is the tip vortices created as the propeller spins rapidly through the air. Now, MIT wanted to see if creating a toroidal shape propeller would help improve its sound profile. The idea being that a toroidal shape would cause the vortices to be generated along the whole shape of the propeller rather than just at the tips. This would mean that the vortices would dissipate in the atmosphere quicker and not propagate as far, making the drone much quieter, especially when it's far away from you. And it worked pretty darn well. Now, toroidal shaped propellers aren't really a new thing, especially when you consider the marine world. A company called Shero has actually been selling them for quite some time. And I thought it'd be really cool to actually buy one of these when I was looking at them for my, for my dad's boat to see how well they actually performed until I went to their product page and saw that they wanted $5,000 for one. And that's pretty steep, especially considering like a standard prop for like a 225 outboard is somewhere around $500. So yeah, sorry dad. But Shero's Shero MX makes a lot of the same claims, saying that their Shero MX provides 50% more reverse thrust, significant speed increases at mid-range RPM, quieter operations at planing speeds, and up to 30% more efficient between 2,500 and 4,000 RPM. Also, a dramatic reduction in cavitation from tip vortices. And they show this in a pretty cool underwater smoke test. So it does appear at least some of the claims Shero makes are true. I'd be interested to know if you have one of these propellers on your boat, is it as good as they say? And more, more importantly, is it worth $5,000? All I know is that this past summer, I saw a dude drag his prop across the concrete when he pulled his boat out of the, out of the water. And I could only imagine what he would have felt if it was a $5,000 Shero MX. So pro tip, when you pull your boat out of the water, make sure you raise your outdrive. Anywho, as soon as MIT released their video on their studies of Toyota propellers, my notifications exploded with people asking me if I'd seen it, and more importantly, could I turn it into a fan? Of course I can. Basically at this point, anything I look at, I'm like, that could be a fan. Now it does seem that MIT tested a variety of designs, but the one I chose to try to replicate was one I saw most often and one that they appear to be using in their video. This design is comprised of three toroidal shaped airfoils and they kind of terminate on the blade preceding it. Now, unfortunately I couldn't find any MIT models for free online. So I got the best picture I could of one and I hopped in SolidWorks. I went for a five degree camber, a 45 degree angle of attack and a flat trailing edge. And the trailing edge being flat just makes it easier to print. I also did my best to keep the design similar to what MIT had, but scaling it to fit in the A12X25 body. And well, not a perfect one-to-one -one representation. I think it came out pretty good and should give us a good idea at how well this design translates into PC cooling. Now, in order to have some sort of benchmark to see how well or not well this design does, we're gonna be testing it up against, of course, the A12X25. Now, if I'm honest, I don't, <laughs> I don't really have the greatest of hopes for this thing, not because the design is bad per se, but more specifically because this design was meant to fly a drone and not cool a PC. I guess I, I mean, I do have a Phantom 4, so I could like reprint this to be used as props for that drone if you wanted to see that. It is pretty cold outside, but I could probably make it happen. But for now, we'll stick with the, the normal testing that we've been doing for season five of the Fan Showdown. In the smoke test, the MIT design doesn't appear to be doing all that bad. However, when we compare it to the A12X25, you can see that the A12X25 produces much tighter airflow that's moving way quicker. Now, both of these fans are spinning at relatively the same speed. The Noctua came in right around 2000 RPM and the toroidal was just a hair faster at 2059 RPM. Now the sound test is what I was looking most forward to. However, the A12X25, at least on my setup, was quieter than the MIT toroidal. Now that being said, I did notice a reduction in higher frequencies, specifically frequencies over 500 Hertz. And that does align with what MIT also observed. Now I think the biggest reason we don't see a bigger difference in sound between these two is 
they just don't spin fast enough. If you think how fast a drone propeller spins versus a PC fan, it's quite different. Also, not to have put some effort into making sure that the A12X25 was quiet when, uh, when they designed it, so there is that too. So far, it's not looking that good for this specific design, but you know, let's finish it out anyhow. Now this season of the Fan Shutdown, season five, we are competing to see who can push the most air through a radiator, meaning that fans with the higher static pressure tend to perform better. And currently, the top dog is still the A12X25. Now I did retest the A12X25 along with the toroidal just to make sure that all of our numbers kind of line up from the last time I ran this fan. And again, the A12X25 came in around 495 feet per minute of airflow. What? The MIT toroidal, on the other hand, only managed 286. So although this design does do pretty good at flying a drone, in this configuration, it doesn't do all that good pushing air through a radiator. But that's not to say it couldn't. I'm willing to bet if more blades were added or they were optimized better for static pressure, this design could do much better in the testing. And I'm sure that somebody out there is already working on an updated design for the fan showdown. And we might see it, you know, in a future episode. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this video interesting and keep your eyes out. If you see any more articles like this where schools are doing cool research projects or companies are trying to innovate new technology to bring to market, let me know. Send me a comment down below or send me a tweet. It's always fun to try to create stuff like this and uh, we'll see you next time.